what they had proclaimed, the independence of our country. The independence as a republic. The Sinn Féin organization now made a real living vital force by coming in with the volunteers that was organized and so in December 1918 you had in the general election a tremendous victory for Sinn Féin. On the 3rd of February I think I was able to get away from from uh, Lincoln Jail. <laughs> Hey everybody, um, behind me is the walls of Lincoln Prison and I'm going to tell you a story of a very successful prison escape that happened with the aid of a fruitcake in there in 1919. So Eamon de la Vera, who would become the third president of Ireland while serving time in here in 1918 and 1919. Now, Irish politics at the beginning of the 20th century were a very turbulent thing. And this isn't a world that Eamon de la Vera was born into. He was actually born in New York City. But after his father died very young, he would live in Ireland and he became fascinated in the Irish language and Irish politics. And in 1913, he joined the Irish Volunteers to combat the national military group. Um, the First World War, a lot of Irish people saw this as an opportunity. The British's unfortunate or, well, Britain's involvement in the war and being incredibly obviously all military and funding being brought into that. Iris, some of the Irish thought this was a great opportunity to, to become independent. And they staged the Easter Rising uh, in Dublin. Um, very famous event in Irish independent history, but it wasn't very successful. And the Irish rebels were paraded through the Dublin streets after it ended, and they were jeered and booed by the people of Dublin because of what it had done to their city. It destroyed Dublin. Um, but Irish people's opinion turned when the British started to execute these Irish rebels. Um, Eamon de la Vera was next to be shot and there's contra con contradicting reports on why he wasn't shot. Popular belief, and the story I believe, is he was born in New York, as I mentioned earlier, so he was an American citizen, and the British couldn't afford to assassinate an American citizen at the time. But how did he end up behind these walls? Well, in 1918, the British being very concerned about the growing well, Sinn Féin movement, um, Eamon de la Vera was president of Sinn Féin, they created a story that the Irish rebels were plotting with the Nazi party, and which they weren't, and they were jailed for this. Now, 70 members of the Irish rebels were sentenced to prison. Half were sent to Usk, and the other half, including Eamon de la Vera, were sent here. Now, this location isn't very beautiful, so I will change location and I will get back 
and tell you about the prison escape. <clears throat> now, behind me is the allotment, and in front of me is Christ Hospital, and all the way back down there is the old Lincoln prison. Now, Michael Collins, who's probably more revered and beloved in Irish independence history than Eamon de la Vera, escaped capture. He was one of the only rebels that escaped capture. And he plotted the escape of Eamon de la Vera. Now, at the back of Lincoln Prison, on the exercise yard, there was a door. And the whole brick wall that you saw just before wasn't there. So all you had to do was open that door and you had freedom. Now, Eamon de la Vera was working in the chapel in the prison. And it was through working in the chapel that he worked with a Peter Taylor and got his key and using a tin of tobacco with wax inside made a copy. And he sent this copy out to Michael Collins and the other rebels to draw up some keys. Now the way he the way he got the copy out was he put a cartoon, he sent a cartoon out and the cartoon had a big key, I put a picture up. Uh, there's nowhere for me to walk either than <laughs> back and forward. Um, but it took four copies of the key for, for it to work, to get the right one. And on the night they escaped, Nowhere for me to go. Um, they wore lots of socks over their boots so they wouldn't make any noise. They walked through the corridor and they very simply put the key in the door and Michael Collins, who was waiting at the other side, put his key in the door to speed it up and it snapped. And Eamon de la Vera just got his key out and opened it and ran through these allotments and when he was out he locked all the doors on the way out to confuse everybody of how he got out and he lambasted Michael Collins for coming because if the British captured them all it was a massive result for them but as he came out they ran down here they went to Christ, Lincoln Christ Hospital, school. It's a school now, but it was a hospital in World War I. And a lot of the soldiers would meet their girlfriends. And there were three couples stood out here. And Michael Bolins, uh, Michael Collins, Frank Kelly, and I think it was Michael Bolins, all were waiting for Eamon de la Vera and two others. And they came through here and obviously very worried, well not very worried, I think it was Mike Boland's put his coat around Eamon de la Vera to pretend they were girlfriends, linking arm in arm, and even said, it's chilly out here, isn't it? But I will take you to the next location and tell you more about their route from here and how they got out of Lincoln. So it was here, in the shadow of the Lincoln Cathedral at this pub, the Adam and Eve pub, that the rebels parted ways. A couple of important bits of information I forgot to say. The way they smuggled in the keys, the Adam and Eve pub, I'll go around there because it's a bit quiet. The way they smuggled in the keys was through fruitcake and it took four cakes of keys. And also, from where we were stood, you could see the windows to the prison. You can't anymore. It was all fields back in the day. And, and when Eamon de la Vera was puffing on his cigars, it would create a smoke and the rebels from outside would light their torches and they would be able to see the 
be able to see see the light. So here, I'm just walking back and forward again. I prefer when I can walk somewhere. They two of the rebels, the two Shawns, went down to the train station and got the train. And Eamon Delavera had to get a taxi, and because it was during wartime, there was reduction on travel that you could do. Um, so I'll put the cathedral in the way. So they he had to get a taxi to Sheffield, and from Sheffield you'd have to get the taxi. You would have to get the taxi to Worksop, from Worksop to Sheffield, and from Sheffield he got the train to Manchester, and that's where his safe house was. But yeah, um, there's another bit to the story um, that I'll say when I get further down the hill. I'll try and give you a little map of the route he took. He went to the Peacock Inn, and that's where the wardens drank so they had to hurry past here down here and it was in this car park they convened and said um where well, they went on the separate ways this was a huge deal for the rebels to escape from a british prison prison and 1919 they would go to the paris peace conference <coughs> excuse me and where all the leading nations after the First World War met and try and strive for independence. They would use a lot of uh, different means to say how they escaped. It became a mystery for a bit of time and they would create stories that they sent Irish girls to flirt with the wardens and that's how they got out. And they even said they used the allotments that we just saw to sing Gaelic songs and pass messages, but that wasn't the case. It was cartoons and fruitcake. But I'll see you down the hill for the last little bit. So after his escape, Eamon de la Vera would very rarely leave office. He would be Ireland's longest serving prime minister and the third president in Irish history. Michael Collins, three years later, um, as I said before, more revered and loved in Irish history, would be killed in the Irish Civil War. He would also later go on to be um, played by Liam Neeson in a film. But Eamon de la Vera came back to Lincoln to do a speech. He was lecturing and did a speech at a cinema in Ireland. And on the morning that he was doing his speech, he went into that church where the priest was none other, there it is, the priest was none other than Peter Taylor, the man that he had taken the key from in the prison. I don't think that's a coincidence, so is it just me? And he would also go up to Lincoln Prison and the governor would give him a tour of his old cell and he would recount his steps of the escape of that day. So a little weird bit of footnote in history. So that's the end of the story. Crazy. A fruitcake aided the escape of a future president of Ireland. But I thank you so much for your time. Please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed. Take care now. All the best. Bye bye.